Hello and welcome to the new look, new name culture show on France 24. After nearly 10 years, Encore is becoming Arts 24. That's the new name. And as Monday is Music Day, I'm joined by our music critic, Marjorie Hash. Hello. Hello. Thanks for being here. Now, also in our new studio is the Irish singer-songwriter C-Mat and Givan and Luca from the French group Howling Jaws, who have both got upcoming second albums coming out. Hello, everybody. Hello. Thank Hello. you so much for being here. Now, um, let's talk about names then. Uh, for Arts24, we wanted something simple that was self-explanatory. Uh, you're a Paris-based band and part of France's rockability garage scene, and you've been playing together since high school. Uh, tell us about the name. Where did Howling Jaws come from? Well, uh, we kind of did the opposite thing that you did. Uh, it's the hardest name to pronounce for French people. <laughs> uh, it was kind of a... Um, uh, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm losing my words. An homage to Howlin' Wolf, because we listened to, we used to listen to a lot of blues, and he's the baddest singer that was. So yeah, kind of this and the, that's it, I don't know. And the name <laughs> of your, happened. the name of your um, new album is Half Asleep, Half Awake. Yes. Okay. That's the state of the uh, mind we've currently in. <laughs> <laughs> this Monday morning, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the CMAT, uh, your initials are, their initials for Akira, Mary, uh, Alice Thompson. Yeah. And uh, also your new album, the second album, is called Crazy Mad For Me. Yeah. What does this tell us about the state of your album and of you? Uh, so Crazy Mad For Me is a lyric lifted from a Sheena Easton song. I'm a really big Sheena Easton fan and she has a song called Morning Train 9 to 5 which details a relationship between a man and a woman where she's like just waiting all day for her man to come home from work so that she can like make love to him. And in the 1980s, this was seen as like a very romantic notion and it's like, oh, it's so lovely. And nowadays I would read that as a horror story. And that's, <laughs> and that's kind of an analogy for what the whole album is about because the album is specifically about a relationship in, I was in when I was younger with someone who was a lot older than me and it was like not a good situation. And at the time I thought it was like so romantic and amazing. I'm so smart, I'm so clever. And now I look back on it and I'm like, oh my God, that was awful. Well, you actually <laughs> said, um, you described it as being about a relationship that could have actually ruined your life yeah. and nearly did. Yeah. Um, let's have a look at the latest video <laughs> then from the album, um, Stay For Something. See, Matt, you're on tour in the UK and Ireland. You're here in Paris to promote um, your second album, your new album. Why is it important, do you think, to promote music here in France? Well, I love French music. I was a really weird teenager who was obsessed with Serge Gainsbourg and, like, you know, I recently did the whole thing of, like, going to his grave and, like, kissing a ticket and leaving it on the grave. I was, I was kind of one of those kids. You can go Actually, to his house soon. <laughs> huh? You can go to his house soon. It's like reopening it as a museum. <gasps> <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you see, it's, <laughs> it's this kind of thing. I was, like a, I was like a Gainsbourg girl, and then that kind of spread out into loving, you know, Goddard and, like, all the stuff that happened here in the 1960s, but... In particular, a lot of the album in my mind is kind of set in the 1890s in Montmartre because A, I was reading a lot about it at the time. I was reading a lot about Yvette Gilbert. I read like her biography, but um, I, I was really, I'm really fascinated by how so much important French culture is very working class and that this country really prides itself on that. And I think it's kind of something missing from a lot of other countries. It's something like, you know, when you push poor people out into a specific area, they usually do it to keep them away from the masses, but then that's usually where the best music and art comes from. And I wanted, I don't know, I, I really like paying tribute to that because I think it's true of me as well, a little bit. <laughs> we, heard, we heard that your uh, singing career started here in France at campsites doing karaoke, is that true? Yes, that is so true, <laughs> but it's so weird because I had this really weird thing happen where I was like, 13 or 14 years old and I do karaoke and then 
people would follow me around the campsite for days afterwards, just being like, you are so good. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, it's yeah. so good. And I was like, thank you. And they made me like sing happy birthday to this guy in like a sexy, like Marilyn Monroe way. And he was, when you were 14. Yeah. Mm. But he was he was like a teenager as well, but it was still weird. And everyone was like, ah, voila, so good. And I was like, he, okay. So yeah, that was my first uh, taste of stardom. Amazing. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, you guys had a bit of a taste of stardom, Holly and Joy's boy. You were like playing a prison and it's one of Europe's biggest prisons here in, in France, uh, Fleury Morangis. Uh, can you tell us a bit what this experience was like? like uh did you feel like uh johnny cash or metallica who famously done that uh, luca do you want to start actually it was the 20th birthday of johnny cash death death that day like last week yeah we which didn't know is that a, a strange coincidence wow yeah. and but it was a, it was a strange but really great experience to, to play for those people and for some of them inmates it was the first gig they saw ever saw and most of them were really cheering up a really good crowd actually so it was really yeah, it was experience. really, really cool. Because at first, when you go, go to play in prison, you, you're going to think you're going to be afraid of the people, right? Because it's like all this big thing, criminals and stuff. Actually, the walls are way scarier. Mm -hmm. And uh, the room kind of lit up when everybody came in and everybody was super nice, super happy to be here. So the energy completely changed once all the inmates came. So it was a great experience. I think we, we, we will come back if we can and do a proper... Because it was raining the day we played, so we had to play in a small room. But uh, usually you play in a, a kind of football field and all the inmates can see you, go, see you from their cells. So. In a stadium, actually. Yeah, mm. probably <laughs> going to do that again to do a proper one. Wow, what an experience. Now, just um, tell us about you and your album, then. It's called, as you said, Half Asleep, Half Awake, as you're feeling now. Hopefully you're feeling a bit more awake now. We're, bit, we're on yeah, TV. No. The makeup helps. <laughs> we're like two-thirds. <laughs> How would you um, describe the album? Well, it's uh, more psych psychedelic than the previous one. We wanted something heavier and uh, we experienced with like we took new instruments to to find new sounds and we went back to london to record it with liam watson who's a producer and he recorded the white stripes uh, the elephant album amongst other great artists so it's great to go back to, there in london in that in that you know atmosphere we love of london <laughs> Um, now, both of you uh, have new albums coming out um, this autumn that we're looking forward to. Marjorie, what else should be on our radar this Ooh, season? I'm just going to have to say Kylie Minogue because uh, the uh, Princess of uh, Australia was back with uh, pretty much my uh, guilty pleasure of the summer, Padam, which brought her back to the top of the top 10 charts. Uh, 40 million views already and a big hit on social media platforms with young people imitating her or taking on the song. Uh, so, yeah, it was my guilty pleasure. And I'm also super excited to see if this uh, new six album Tension will be bringing the Australian pop princess back to the musical stardom she knew in the 2000s. Uh, let's check out her latest single which is really hyper pop. Kylie fans, anybody? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Massive. Well, rap star Doja Cat is also back um, with a fourth studio album entitled Scarlet. Yeah, it's less pop and feminine and more hip hop, R&B and masculine. Apparently, uh, she felt like critics were questioning uh, her rapper status uh, or power when she adopted a pop stance on her last record. Personally, after a summer of Barbie soundtrack, I'm actually pretty happy to come across these dark and heavy beats. People say they met me in the past now. I done took the spotlight and made them black out. I done took the whole dick and blew my back out. I just swallowed all these kids and spit the class out. I take the trash out. I'm finna cash out. Bitch, do not pass out. Yeah, hey, how my demons look. Now that my pockets full. How my demons look. 
Yeah. <laughs> Excellent video. I'm over to a girl power festival taking place this weekend um, just outside of Paris in Courbevoie. Yeah, Le Festival des Femmes Pas Oubliées, or the Festival of Unforgotten Women, is back for a second edition. They'll be mixing classical music, jazz, pop and French chanson, uh, coming from young up-and-coming artists as well as experienced ones who will be shedding light on these women composers history chose to forget. And so there'll be also going to be workshops and lots of little activities for children. So it's a really nice outing at the weekend. And we can't not mention it, the comeback of the Rolling Stones. Oh, my God, so much to say. At the same time, it's the Rolling Stones. We can only be happy that they're returning. Um, I'm also kind of excited because it's Andrew Watt, who's the new you know, hot uh, rock producer who did the last Ozzy Osbourne that got a Grammy Award. But at the same time, I don't know if you've seen the cover, it's pretty ugly. <laughs> and also uh, the music video with uh, the Euphoria star gyrating in the back of a car, like with no clothes on, is a bit 80s and has been. So Yeah, well, mm. they are in their 80s, aren't they? I know. Charlie <laughs> Watts is missing. Charlie Watts is missing, the drummer. Mm. And what about um, you guys then, Seema? What are you looking forward to? I am really looking forward to the new Dolly Parton album. She has done a rock and roll album. Um, and I just think that's perfect in every single way imaginable. On the album cover, she's like wearing an eye patch and like black clothing. Um, <laughs> she's just my favorite person on the planet. So she kind of can't do any wrong. Mm -hmm. But when I saw that the first single off of this album was a cover of Let It Be featuring Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr, I was like, damn, she's a genius. <laughs> it's just so funny that she can do whatever she wants. She can. She can do whatever she wants and we'll all buy it and I'll be there. We love you it. Know. We love it. And you guys? Uh, kind of looking for uh, small French bands that are coming up because uh, the French scene is kind of waking up and like kind of rock and roll and rock genre. So yeah, this band called Como Drag and the Moon Adors, which is a friend of ours, super cool. I uh, got a release an album soon. Al Vilda is a girls band that's pretty awesome. Got a release an album soon as well. And uh, Friends After Geography, I got to re re release an EP. So yeah, check them out. It's pretty cool. Okay, well, thank you so much. And thank you for coming in to see us. And thank you also to music critic Marjorie Hatch. Thank you. Um, you can catch her every evening on her radio show, RTL2. Um, see Matt, your new album, Crazy Mad For Me, is out in October. And thanks to Howling Jaws. Half Asleep, Half Awake is out at the end of September. And you'll be playing in Paris at the Moroccanery in November. We're going to play out with um, Howling Jaws' new video, Mirror Mirror. Thanks for watching. And see you next time on Arts24. You could have stared it if they took it away You gotta know the thoughts of